Alright, so I want to make a really, really quick video about uh, this guy, Michael Cornachia and Christina Hayes. It's uh, titled, A Message for Kirk Cameron. Now, if you're not aware of what happened with Kirk Cameron and why uh, these people are posting a message for Kirk Cameron, is because Kirk Cameron uh, was questioned on by Piers Morgan on whether or not homosexuality is um, um, a sin and what do you think about it things like that so yeah CNN host Piers Morgan um, let him present his view on gay marriage uh, if you don't know what Kirk Cameron said then I would go and watch the video it's all over YouTube so it's not hard to find but uh, I just want to reply to this video, just how how ridiculous this message to Kirk Cameron was. It, it it's very emotionally appealing for one. Keep that in mind. Very emotionally appealing, and two, it it doesn't even deal with what he said. Rather, it's an attack on his position. It's a hate on his position which is hypocritical because they're saying that he's hating and that Jesus would have spread this kind of rhetoric. Um, so let me see if I can find where it starts. Because there's a lot of kind of nasty stuff in the beginning. No, you became an addict. Not to drugs or alcohol. Which is a fun way to die. No, you became an addict to this archaic viewpoint of how the world should be. Chris Ar archaic viewpoint. Now, this... The homosexuality, and the reason I say that is because I'm replying to Michael Cornichia, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Homosexuality is not something new. Homosexuality uh, was present at the time Jesus was alive. And so if you're going to say something is archaic, you're saying your own position is archaic. Homosexuality, that's archaic too. Um, and by saying that this, it's a view that how the world should work, uh, is true, but I don't get his point. Y you have a view of how the world should work too, and it's just as old. So, uh, really, no point there. The, it's it's kind of the rhetoric that Richard Dawkins brings up. How this is so old, and and Christianity has all these similarities with all these other religions, and and this is why it's um, uh, it should be discredited and get, gotten rid of. No argument. Cena, tell Kirk what archaic means. I have no idea. That's right. Old and ancient. You said that being a homosexual is detrimental and ultimately destructive to so many of the foundations of civilization. You really said that? Yes, he said that. What a douchebag. Kirk, you read the Bible. I, I love the Bible. <laughs> and this is where I think I laughed out loud when I first saw this. I love the Bible. And then listen what she says after she says that. The problem is, they don't know what the Bible actually... Well, maybe they do know what it says, uh, but they don't want to accept all that it says. It's not just the Old Testament that talks about homosexuality. The New Testament speaks of it in various places, and how it, it is sin. And we're not, I'm not even going to get into the discussion of whether or not it's the practice or uh, prostitution, anything like that. It's clear. It is the practice of something that should happen between a male and a female. That is homosexuality. Same sexuality. I know you do, Christina, but do you think what happened 2,000 years ago in Jerusalem still holds true in 2012 America? As I said, what, what is so significant about 2,000 years ago when Jesus um, was alive and doing his earthly ministry and at the same time homosexuality was being practiced. What, what point are you making? Only Jesus is love. <laughs> Only the love of Christ is that what matters. Now what does the love of Christ mean? Well, uh, John tells us this is the love for God that we keep his commandments. So love has an action aspect to it. James says... Um, you are justified by your works. You see that a man is justified by his works. Not before God, not because of your works, but rather your works are a fruit before men 
you are justified before men of the faith that you say you have. And so, um, Christina Hayes says, I love the Bible, and Jesus' love is all that matters, yet does not keep his commandments, or at least does not uh, have a problem with homosexuality um, not being obeyed, uh, at least a abstaining from homosexuality. So, this is a very, very common problem with, uh, with liberals, with even some conservatives, but liberals, uh, kind of wishy-washy, uh, religious people who think that, like pluralists, who think that everyone has their own way to God, they say, they harp on love, 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 but what does love mean? Who defines what love is? We need to let the Bible define what love is. And, and God has shown His love by sending His Son to die for sinners. We, we're sinners. And so He's shown His love by sending His Son to, so that we can be forgiven. Now why are we sinners? Because we practice things like homosexuality. And so God did not save us, if you are saved, He did not save us in order that we may continue sinning. John tells us, if we say we've come to know Him, and yet we do not um, keep His commandments, the truth is not in us. I mean, they didn't even have toilets back then. See, Kirk, you think it's a choice, or, or the decision to be gay. Well, that was as much my decision or my choice as my choice to be born with black hair, or, or Christina to be born with red hair. And that's a much disputed, um, I don't want to say fact, issue, topic, among even scientists, whether or not there's a gay gene or not. We don't know. But of course, the homosexual is going to jump on that as if that's some sort of justification for their homosexuality. I was born a sinner. I can't help that. I was born wanting to sin. I did not have to be taught how to lie. So, th And I didn't have to choose my hair color. But that doesn't mean that I'm relieved of my, of my guilt or that it's, wrong. it's not wrong. Just because I'm born a certain way does not mean that it's okay, that it's natural, or at least um, natural in the sense that that's how God designed it. Oh, okay. oh, I lost my place. Being gay is an all I am, and there is no gay agenda, Kirk. Nope. My family that I'm... Oh. You. Yes. Silly. And it's with support of friends like... Uh, see, vaginas to, to not be attracted to you. And then opening up a sport attractive. And... I don't know where my spot is. Actually, I, think this I was is more it. involved. Here we are, here we are. The thing is, Kirk, I grew up watching you, and I had a crush on you. I know. This is where it gets just really personal for Michael Cornichia to come out and say something like this, and I think he's done this to appeal to the emotion, to say, it's as if it was a romance story. Oh, I liked you. I had a crush on you. And now look what you're saying about me. As if that, as if, if I were to, um, if, if someone were to say they were a murderer, and um, I murdered for you, you know, I killed this woman so we could be together, as if that's justification for what you did, or that's supposed to appeal to my emotion, and I feel sorry, and, and I feel guilty for speaking out against murder, because you did that for me. No, that, that doesn't even logically follow, it's an appeal to emotion probably freaking you out. Well, imagine me being freaked out that I found Kirk Cameron attractive. There I was, sitting there, watching you on Family Matters, trying, trying to, to not be attracted to you. And then opening up a Sports Illustrated magazine and, and trying to find breasts a, 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 attractive, which I couldn't, or, or vaginas attractive. I tried to show mine to him on the way over here. Oops. See, Kirk, I want to be making this. Keep in mind, she loves the Bible. Video. I'm confident in myself as a homosexual. So am I. You're a homosexual? No, I'm confident in you. Yes. Silly. And it's with support of friends like Christina and my family that I'm proud to be gay. Supportive friends that claim to be Christian and they're supportive towards your homosexuality. That, that, that word Christian does not go with supportive towards homosexuality. It doesn't work. And that is that is well settled issue. You cannot argue that from the Bible that you should support sin. You don't do it. You don't support sin. You can love the person, but you don't love and approve of their sin. That's a bad sign. And so 
Christina Hayes, she didn't say she was a Christian in this video. She said she loved the Bible and that Jesus' love is all that matters. And so when, when people who are lost watch and listen to what Christina Hayes says about God's love and Jesus' love and you can be supportive of homosexuality and love the and sexuals and love the Bible. No, you can't. If you love the Bible, you'll tell them they need to repent of homosexuality. They need to turn away from it. It is sin. Just like murder and adultery. It's sin. It doesn't matter if you think you're born gay. I was born a sinner. We're all born sinners. We are still commanded to repent of our sins and to turn to Jesus Christ as the only way to salvation. And that we don't deserve it. It is by grace. It is by, through faith. It is not of ourselves. It's nothing to boast about. Being gay isn't all I am. And there is no gay agenda, Kirk. Nope. We don't want to talk about our sex lives as much as we want to hear you guys talk about the gay agenda does not say that homosexuals want to talk about their sex life. The gay agenda is that we're going to redefine what marriage is. We're going to take a definition, a religious sacrament, a religious thing, marriage, and we're going to redefine it and say, this applies to us too. That's like saying that the word saved applies to the lost in some way. It just doesn't work. It's a contradiction of terms and the whole concept falls apart if you change the definition of a word. And so the gay agenda is not oh these homosexuals are telling us about what they do behind closed doors. No, the gay agenda is going to activist judges to force a law through through an activist judge to redefine what marriage is and to call uh, people who disagree with homosexuality homophobes, haters, um, just nasty names just to ad hominem because they have no argument. That's the gay agenda. Okay? Everyone has an agenda, so you can't say there is no gay agenda because we all have agendas. But what happens is, when you say it's unnatural and it's detrimental, and you are talking to the young members of my LGBT family, young members that don't have the support that I have, Mm. who are struggling with themselves, may have parents who are against homosexuals. They can't even tell their own parents how they feel. And my advice for Mikkel, uh, Mikkel, Michael um, is they could have peace and they could stop harming themselves if they would just repent and turn to God and that Jesus promises peace to those who are his sheep. Um, there's a psalm that says, he makes me lie down in green pastures and drink from the river. This is, this is something that God will do. He will take care of his sheep. But if you refuse to come to God, if you harden your heart, you will have no peace. You will have no comfort. You will want to hurt yourself. Because that's the effect of sin. Is that we destroy ourselves, And that's why homosexuality is a sin is because it destroys us, destroys civilization. And so that's my advice as far as his friends and family suffering, is that they repent. And those young members of my family go out there and they hurt themselves. And that I will not stand for. Neither will I. Neither will a lot of people. And that is what this backlash is all about. You cannot stand on the First Amendment and say you have a freedom of speech. I want you to stand on intelligence. <laughs> I think I, I remember laugh out loud, laughing out loud that part. You can't stand on the First Amendment right. Well, yes I can because that's exactly what you're doing. No, Kirk Cameron, you need to stand on intelligence as if it's an intelligent thing to keep your genes out of the gene pool. According to Darwinian evolution, putting your genes in the gene pool is an intelligent thing to do. It is getting your genes as far down the line in time as you can and surviving. Homosexuality, by Darwinian evolutionary um, concept, if you will, is not an intelligent thing. And 
you, it's not intelligent biblically either. And so the only way it's intelligent is if you have a wrong presupposition, and that is, he did, I don't even see <laughs> how homosexuality can be applied to being intelligent, or that deduced from intelligence, homosexuality is intelligent and justifiable. It just doesn't make sense. And know that you have that freedom, but know that whatever you say is heard by so many. And I know that's not what your Jesus wants. Yes, Jesus would want us to point out sin. And yes, Kirk Cameron is well aware that lots of people are listening. And that's why he said what he said, because he meant it. He meant what he said. And he knew that he was going to get backlash from people like you, Mr. Michael, um, and from uh, liberals and from the media. Um, because once you point out something uh, that people are very sensitive about, there's going to be an uproar, especially right now when homosexuality is a hot topic politically and ethically. This has an ethical aspect to it. And so Kirk Cameron is well aware that people are going to be upset and that he could possibly have, um, he could lose donations from people, um, for, or at least his ministry could lose donations. He's well aware of the consequences, but Kirk Cameron knows that the Bible is true, and so he said what he said, hoping and trusting in God that those that would hear would be moved by God to repent of it, or to have their hearts hardened. God will have his will. Because your Jesus is my Jesus. And no, his Jesus is not the Jesus of the Bible. His Jesus is a Jesus who winks at sin. His Jesus is someone who wants you to... Uh, to just be loving. And Jesus does want you to be loving. But again, what does love mean? How does the Bible define love? He never spread that kind of hate. And now it's hate to, to say something is destructive, such as homosexuality, which is. I think, I think any, any real Darwinist would say that homosexuality is destructive to civilization. It's not productive. Okay? Homosexuality does not progress civilization in a Darwinian sense. And so any real consistent Darwinist would have to say that homosexuality is destructive. And so then what you have are the homosexual um, proponents arguing with the scientific consensus about what is um, what is destructive and what's okay and what's not okay and and so you see that even on their own um, I say outside of the church there's still battles going on with what is productive and what's destructive yet you don't hear homosexuals um, putting it all over the media that the Darwinists are haters and they 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 have hate speech towards homosexuals and no it's always the Christians. It's, it's always the Christians. Erk, I want you to take your head out from your Bible. Close your eyes. Take your head out of your Bible. Close your Bible and listen to what, Mr. Michael? Go deep down into your heart. Your heart. And listen to God because God is there. God is there in your heart. Yes, He is in Mr. Cameron's heart. And He listens to God through the Word of God. Mr. Mr. Cameron does not have to get in some position and meditate. He doesn't go in his heart to get God's revealed will. He goes to the Bible and gets his will, which obviously Mr. Michael has rejected. And ask yourself, does God or Jesus or Zeus or Clickety Clack Oh, I love Clickety Clack. Really care yeah, sure. who I love? Yeah, he does. Because if they did, they wouldn't have made me this way. Yeah, he can. Um, God does have a will, and um, God's will will be done, and he fashions the hearts of men, and he can still hold us accountable for that. He made me so that I would be sinful, so that he would point to either his mercy or to his justice. And with the same way of Mr. Michael, Mr. Michael made all these choices. He made all these choices. And yet points to God and says, God wouldn't do that if he didn't want me to be that way. And that's exactly right. But Mr. Michael sees that as justification. 
that he's okay. Now, Mr. Michael also would not take that same justification that, well, God just made me this way, therefore it's okay. He wouldn't take that and apply that to uh, pedophiles, to murderers, to people who have a habit of uh, stealing. I forget the technical term. They claim, I was born this way. I was born to murder. I was born insane. That's not okay. But homosexuality is. <laughs> it makes no sense. And I'm a handsome gay man. Mm. So that were you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> All right, Kirk. We don't want to take up too much of your time, man. Get back to your family. Just wanted to give you a little food for thought. Up. Yeah, that's some, uh, some food for thought there where you have so many inconsistencies that you, you can't even you can't even get them to say anything that um, they really really hold on to because it's it's all feelings it's all emotions it's all it's all political correctness it's all about all about what I want and what how I can justify what I believe without making sense and being consistent the Bible is consistent the Bible is the Word of God the Bible speaks clearly about man, about the afterlife, about who God is, about what God commands of men to do. It's very clear. But what Mr. Michael has made is the typical secular mindset. It just changes. It's just subjective. And because it's subjective, you have no right to say that I'm wrong. And if you do, you're a hater. Hate speech. And that's that's the home the homosexual agenda is that if you speak against us we will call you haters but I can speak against you and I'm not a hater you see the the sense the logic doesn't make sense it falls back on its its own standard so I want to encourage everyone who listened to Kirk Cameron originally on CNN um, who heard the response from Michael and um, if I'm pronouncing his last name Cornachia, Michael Cornachia and Christina Hayes their um, video titled A Message for Kirk Cameron uploaded by Corn Laughter on March the 10th 2000, 2012 um, and you watch this response to be encouraged that this is going to happen to you and that we can't sit by and um, and be in fear of what the world will think about us, what the homosexual will think about us. We need to we need to stand firm on this issue, especially now that homosexuality is a sin, and that there are there are effects, there are consequences to homosexuality. And Kirk Cameron was right that it destroys civilization. That's the consequence of homosexuality. And so, be encouraged, saints. Be encouraged, beloved, that, that you stand firm in the faith and that you uh, have no fear of men, uh, but fear the God who can destroy both body and soul. Uh, thank you for watching, and uh, God bless.